Kaine Perez used to be a welder at PDVSA, Venezuela's state-owned oil company, until he decided to sign a recall referendum to House President Nicolás Maduro. A month later, I received a letter saying I was being let go and that I had to leave the premises. PDVSA retained his severance and he was banned from working for others. With rising food prices, shortages and two kids to feed, he left in search of a job in Colombia, but ended up in this migrant shelter in the border town of Cúcuta. The money I brought with me ran out fast. I was left with little once I changed it into pesos. Venezuelans looking for a lifeline from hardship or political persecution at home don't find it easier on this side of the border. New arrivals are building shacks on the outskirts of Cúcuta. Mario Acosta says he can't continue paying rent. I can find day jobs in construction, but some employers take advantage of us paying us less than locals since we don't have papers. Mario's brother got injured building the new shack and can't pay for stitches. Food is scarce. Still, Mario says he wouldn't go back. If I work a day here, I manage to support us for three or four days. In Venezuela, I'd work for a week and couldn't buy up food for two days. Colombia's migration services estimate that at least four million Venezuelans have crossed into Colombia in search of medicine and food in the last three months. Most of them go back, but many here believe that unless the economic situation improves in Venezuela, this could soon turn in a full-blown humanitarian crisis. The Catholic priest who runs the local shelter says the city is not ready for what will come. It could be a catastrophe. We know that 500,000 or a million people could arrive if the economic and political situation worsens. Authorities say they're ready for it. I don't believe so. The few who are here are barely coping for now. But if larger numbers arrive, they'll need more help than an improvised roof. Alessandro Ampietti, Al Jazeera, Cúcuta.